What's going on YouTube? So Nissan is currently working on a plan to bring 10 new or updated products to the market in 20 months. And this updated 2021 Nissan Armada is the latest product. It has been heavily updated inside and out, both with new styling and new technology. And we've also had the last week to thoroughly test out all those improvements. But with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into the review and see how it stacks up against the competition. So a lot of times a brand does a refresh on a model and you wonder, what did they actually do? This is not one of those instances. It is very apparent straight from the beginning what Nissan has done. And they've really updated this Armada to have that latest design language already in line with the upcoming uh, 2022 Pathfinder model. So up here in the front, you're gonna notice their latest V-Motion grill. This has been enhanced to be a little bit larger and more squared off for a more rugged look. And on this particular SL trim level, we have the Midnight Edition package. So what that's going to do is black out a lot of the elements, including what would normally be chrome around the grille, as well as this lower fascia will be finished in a gloss black. Now, the other big aspect of the refresh is going to be enhanced lighting. So you'll notice this is a brand new headlight cluster. It is fully LED across every single trim level. Um, and you have a really nice looking bracket shaped LED daytime running light and turn signal that goes around through there. And then also down here at the bottom, the SL trim level and platinum will throw in LED fog lamps. Now to go along with the updated front end, Nissan has also updated our wheel options. So on this particular midnight edition, we do have an exclusive 20 inch contrast alloy wheel, which I think has a very nice looking design. Um, and then you do have various other sizes going down to 18 inches on your lower end models and up to 22 inches on your top end platinum. Now moving up here, we do have our signature hood vent. Uh, we have the blacked out V8 branding there. The Midnight Edition does also black out the mirrors as, as well. Um, and then as far as the features you get on this, blind spot monitoring is going to be included as standard on every single trim level. And so long as you choose anything above that base model, that's gonna give you all the other features, including power folding, auto dimming, um, and heating. Now the big changes aren't gonna happen here at the side, but I do wanna point out that with the Midnight Edition, you do have black roof rails, which gives it a little bit of a sportier look. But here at the rear, this is, wow, I, I am so impressed with the change Nissan has made. I mean, they changed a few different things and it just looks so much better overall and has a very classy and elegant look that really reminds me of that QX80 model. So breaking down what you're gonna get, with the Midnight Edition, that's gonna black everything out. So all of this area, your Armada branding, as well as this piece right here is all blacked out to give it a sporty look. We have black SL branding. And then if we look at the taillights, these are also going to be a all new design for the refresh model. They're fully LED. Every single element in here is LED, which looks very premium. And then dropping down here to the bumper area, we're still not gonna have exposed exhaust outlets, but we do have this piece right here that's blacked out in the midnight edition or silver on the rest of them. Now, as far as the safety is concerned for the Armada, Nissan throws in the entire gamut of safety systems standard across the board. So that's gonna be Ford Mercy braking with pedestrian detection, auto high beam headlamps, full speed adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Well guys, as you can see, Nissan has done a lot of work to make this Armada look tougher on the outside. And I know they've done a lot on the inside too, so let's go ahead and check that out. But before we do that, we would really, really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. So every version of the Armada will come standard with Nissan's Intelligent Entry System. And if you choose the SL or above, that will give you a remote start. And then to get inside the truck itself, there's not a sensor behind the handle, so just press the button. All right. And taking a look inside of this cabin, as you can see right off the bat, 
there are certainly big changes inside uh, that really make a big difference as far as the overall experience. But we'll get into that in just a second. Let's first talk about the different interior color and material options. So your base S trim level is going to come standard with cloth seating, SV with leather wrap, and the SL trim level with real leather like you see here. Now usually you've got the choice between charcoal or almond colors, however with the midnight edition, as you would expect, uh, you are exclude or reserved for just the black option only, and then the platinum trim will come with quilted leather. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely appointed. Uh, you have leather covering basically the entire door trim from the top to the bottom, so all through the armrest, the door grab, as well as through this area, nicely padded as well. On S, L, and above, you will have your two-person memory seating, and as far as the windows, they are going to be one-touch auto up and down for all four. Got your Midnight Edition branded floor mats there. And as far as the seats themselves, these are going to be 10-way power adjusting with two-way lumbar support. And like I was already mentioning, this is a real leather. Um, this is a nice seat, very comfortable. Uh, like it has this feeling of like being on a couch or something. So it definitely very nice uh, on a long road trip. Now to get inside the Armada, you do have standard running boards as well as a nice driver's side assist grip. Now the Armada always had very nice cabin materials, so thankfully Nissan hasn't changed the materials as much as they have with the design. So across our upper dash, this is all gonna be finished in a soft touch plastic. As we move down, you'll notice uh, this trim piece that runs through here and onto the door trim. Uh, on this Midnight Edition, this is basically a faux carbon fiber. The other models will have a wood trim instead. Over here on the sides of the console, we have a leather trim that runs down through here. We have more leather that runs along the side here for your knee to rest against. And then this whole center area is going to be finished in more of this faux carbon fiber, which is usually something I don't like, uh, but I have to say I actually do like the look of this in this specific vehicle. Now to start up the Armada, just put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. Just as soon as you do that, you will notice that burly V8 firing up. Now, as far as your gauges are concerned, this does represent a nice change for 2021. If you remember, the old version used to have what I call a calculator screen, basically a small, crunchy display with very basic information. That has been eliminated this year, so we now have a 7-inch display right there in the middle, nice and vivid and plenty bright with all the information that you've come to expect. Um, so this is definitely a nice upgrade. There is not a full digital option or a head-up display available though. Now coming back to the steering wheel, we do have a nice leather wrapped steering wheel um, with the updated Nissan logo on the wheel. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be power adjusting across every single model. And if you choose the top end platinum model, that's going to throw in heating as well as a leather covered airbag cover. All right. So let's go ahead and dig into interior storage next because this is a large SUV after all, so it's very important. So we'll open up our center console here. As you can see right from the start, it is nice and large. We do have a removable tray that we can toss to the side and the whole thing is very nicely felt lined, which I appreciate. Now let's put it to the test though. Got our thick stack of coupons. Stick that in there even with the other stuff I have in there. No problem whatsoever. And this is also accessible for the rear passengers as well. Now up in front of that, we have our two cup holders underneath of that piece of trim there. And new this year uh, with the rearrangement of the dashboard, if you open that right, you can see inside we have a large place to stick our cell phone, which does also double as a wireless phone charging pad. So it's definitely a nice addition. Inside of that is a 12 volt outlet and below that you have your traditional USB connections. Now pulling back to the shifter, this has also been updated with a new design. And of course you pull back to D for drive, bump to the left if you want to do some manual shifting. There are not power shifters on the steering wheel, however. 
And then heading into reverse, this is where you'll be greeted with a standard backup camera or on the SL and above, you'll have Nissan's around view monitor. So this has been updated to have better resolution. As you can see, you have your traditional view with your active trajectory and your 360 view with moving object detection. You can also press this button right here to change from change to some other views uh, like a side view. And in addition to that, the mirrors do tilt down when in reverse to help you see the parking lines better. Now back behind the shifter, you'll find a new addition to the interior as well. And that's going to be this new control knob. Uh, this will help you uh, control the new infotainment system. However, it is also a touch display. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then in front of the uh, shifter right here, you do have a trailer brake controller. All right, now jumping above that, we have an updated climate control setup. This is going to be a three zone automatic setup as standard equipment on all the models. Very simple to use. You just have these nice quality knobs here to adjust your temperature and all the other buttons are physically located below that. Off to the side, we have three stage seat heating. This is included on all but the very base Armada. Uh, however, if you want ventilation, that's going to require the fully loaded Platinum. Okay, so now let's come up here to our audio systems. So of course, there's gonna be a few different choices as far as your audio systems. Uh, however, the top two models are gonna come with the 13 speaker Bose premium sound system. That's what we have, and we'll go ahead and give it a sample right now. So overall sound quality of this system is definitely top notch. Uh, really enjoyed it over the last week. It gets very loud and it has really strong bass if you want it to. Okay, so let's go ahead and get now to the elephant in the room, which is this brand new display. Uh, really modernizes the cabin. If you remember what the old one used to look like with all the buttons around it, uh, this is really a huge difference and takes this cabin into the 21st century. Now, as far as what size this is, this is actually a 12.3 inch display. This is the largest inside of the Nissan lineup. And like I mentioned earlier, you can control it with the knob, but it is also a touch display as well. So that's certainly nice to have both options on board. This right here is your built-in navigation system. It has really nice and crisp resolution and good response. And then coming back out of that, uh, you will find both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities included across the board. On the Apple CarPlay, it's going to be wireless, so that's certainly nice to see, but it's not wireless for Android Auto. Now moving above that, we have an auto dimming mirror with three Homelink Universal remotes built into it. If you choose the top end Platinum, you'll get the rear camera mirror system. And then up here at the very top, this is where you'll find a normal size moonroof. Uh, this is gonna be included on the SL and the platinum trim levels, but there is not a panoramic option. Alrighty guys, I'm in the refreshed Armada's rear seat. And I have to say, sitting back here, I'm very impressed. Just as my first impression, it has a lot of space and a lot of really cool luxury features. Let's talk about that space figure first though. So we have 41 inches of rear legroom, 40 inches of rear headroom. That is slightly smaller than the Chevy Tahoe as well as the Ford Expedition, but really not by much. As you can see behind the seating position, I have, I mean, man, this is probably like a foot, if not a foot and three or four inches of space. And my feet, they don't really slide up underneath the seat that well, but I have plenty of space to put them. And as far as this particular model seating configuration, you're probably noticing that we have the optional 
captain's chairs uh, with this center console. That's a $650 option on the SL and Platinum trims. And I'm a really big fan of this. Nothing else in the segment will give you this besides this and the QX80. And it gives you a ton of storage here in the middle. We could definitely fit our coupons back here, so I should have brought them back. There's tons of space. It's nicely felt lined. If we pop this open, we do have cup holders inside, and we can even drop this open, and that gives us even more space. So we can literally store years worth of coupons right here in the CERN console. So A plus for me. And then if we turn towards the features, uh, here in the center, we are gonna have our own climate control since three zone is uh, standard. Uh, this particular model, we do not have heated rear seats because the Platinum model is gonna throw that in as well as dual rear seat entertainment system screens. And then if we drop down below that, we do have a household style outlet as well as a 12 volt power outlet. And our vents are located up here on the roof. Now let's go ahead and hop into the third row. So in order to get back here, all we have to do is locate this little lever right here. If we push that once, it folds the seat and pops it out of place so we can get back here very easily. And as far as the space is concerned in this third row, um, well, this is certainly not the most spacious um, option you can get. You have 28 inches of rear leg room, 36 inches of rear head room. Um, but mainly the issue I have most of the problems with is gonna be the thigh support. As you can see, this, oh, this uh, seat is flat on the floor and uh, basically that just means that my thighs are gonna be completely sitting up and pretty uncomfortable, but my feet can slide up underneath the seats. Now, as far as, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Um, and as far as the features, we do have cup holders here on this side, and we do have vents, which is not a given. Now walking up to the tailgate, if you get at least the SL trim, you are gonna have a power one, um, but it is not gonna be foot activated or anything like that. And if I could complain about something, this tailgate, I wish it would work a little faster. It's a little slow. But as far as the space itself is concerned, we're gonna come in at 17 cubic feet behind the third row seats. If we fold them, it expands all the way to 50 cubic feet. And then as a maximum, you have 95 cubic feet of space. So certainly that's plenty of space for the average family's needs. Uh, but that is still going to be quite a bit less than the Chevy Tahoe as well as the Ford Expedition. But like I said, I don't really think it's gonna be an issue for most people. Now, as far as the uh, finishings back here, we have a really nice carpeted floorboard here. And if we lift it up, we're gonna find a little bit of additional space. And we have a spare tire up under here. And then on the left side, we have a 12 volt power outlet. And this one does have just the manual folding third row. However, you can get a power folding third row if you go for the platinum model. Now over here in your passenger seat, we do still have power adjustment, which is nice. And we also have lumbar support. And if we open up the glove box, yes, this is a very, very good size glove box. If we take out our coupons here, there is plenty of space, even with other stuff like the owner's manual in here, it fits in here just fine. And I'm sure you'll need to be saving money on food since gas might cost you a little bit in this. And then if we open up the sun visor, we do have a mirror as well as a light. And we can also detach. We have an extension in the end. <laughs> and there it is past 60 miles an hour. Wow. That's right. <laughs> this is a big 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 vehicle and it this thing is still just so quick um so as you probably you know saw drew explain on the outside you have the big v8 badge on the outside so this is going to have a big naturally aspirated 5.6 liter v8 engine um, this is the same one that you see in the titan um, and it's producing 400 horsepower 413 pound feet of torque and you know, as you can see from that acceleration there, this thing absolutely scoots and it sounds absolutely great as well. That's right. It's, um, I'm glad they didn't change this aspect of it because uh, the, this V8 
58 is really just a great sounding, very powerful V8. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where it's at. That probably costs five dollars in gas, but you know, it sounds so good. Now be on the big burly V8 and just enjoying that power. Uh, you can also really enjoy the ride quality that you have on board. Um, Nissan's really done a great job with this. It feels really the same as the Infiniti QX80 that we drove a few months ago. Um, just really smooth, um, quiet in here. Yeah, these seats, seats are awesome. Yes. Oh my gosh. They're like sitting on the couch. You know, all this together is really just a relacing kind of experience. Um, and we'll go ahead and also get the sound level reading here so we can get some uh, official measurements. Uh, it is very windy outside, I will um, preface with that, but we'll get a measurement here as we get behind it. A QX80, QX80 yeah. So we dropped down to 53 decibels wow. even. So that's a really, really nice reading. Yeah, that is on par. That's actually better than a lot of luxury cars like the German luxury vehicles that we test. That's right. Now, the other aspect of the powertrain that you're probably noticing when we took off there is the seven speed automatic transmission. So um, that pairs very nicely to this V8 engine. Uh, over the course of the couple hundred miles that we've driven this Armada, I've had absolutely no issues with it. If I need to get power, I just put my foot down, it switches gears immediately, and the engine does does its good stuff, you know, right, getting yeah. you up to speed. It's an older transmission, but it really doesn't seem like too big of a deficit or anything compared to even like the 10 speed that we drove in the Expedition yeah. recently. And let's go ahead and take a moment to uh, just go ahead and describe our air ball and slam dunks for today. So I'll start us out with the slam dunk and then Drew will take the air ball. But I'm going to say it's the 2021 refresh improvements. Nissan has absolutely killed it when it came to this refresh. I think they did exactly what they needed to do to the Armada to just make it look really nice on the outside. They changed the elements that they needed to to give it like a more masculine and rugged look. And, you know, they've also updated the interior technology to really just make this on par with the segment. And also, this has a lot more value. So, basically, they listen to the customers. Yeah. It's a, it's nice when a company actually listens to what people want updated and they actually do it. Yeah. Um, now, on the airball side of things, it's just going to be the few items that basically you can't change unless you do a ground up redesign. One of the biggest things that I'm thinking of is just uh, utility. This is smaller than some of the main competition at this point. Um, your third row, for instance, yeah. uh, is compromised having the high floor. Um, so there's just some things like that that wouldn't, they're not gonna be able to correct that until this goes yeah. into a full range. Yeah. Right. Now you're probably wanting to know what <laughs> this V8 is going to cost you at the pump. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's not going to be great. It's no. not going to be great. No, no uh, getting around that. But okay, so our two wheel drive numbers are going to be 14 city, 19 highway, 16 combined. If you choose the four wheel drive system, that's going to drop that down one combined to 15, which <laughs> it could be worse. There's always like the Land Cruiser, which yes, is indeed. worse. Yes, <laughs> That could. But it's definitely you know on the lower end and definitely lower than our most modern competitors. Yeah. So just something to keep in mind. But that kind of goes in with price because you're gonna save money when you buy this versus the competition that you Absolutely. can then put into fuel. So let's talk about that. Uh, this Armada is actually gonna start at forty-eight thousand six hundred dollars. For the S trim level, SV is 52.6, SL 56,000. If you add the Midnight Edition package, that'll take you to 57,990. And then the Platinum model is going to top out at $65,000. So as far as this unit specifically, this is actually a two-wheel drive model. And with a small handful of accessories, plus that Midnight Edition package, of course, and the destination of $1,500, takes us to $60,920. Um, you know, and like I was saying, this 
this class has really gotten out of out of control <laughs> almost on the price. I mean, we've driven Tahoes and Yukons and stuff. They're over eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, over eighty thousand dollars. To have something fully loaded, even if you choose the Platinum Trim, which costs a little bit more than this one, you're going to be fully loaded at just a little above $65,000. Yeah, $15,000 less. That's fifteen dollars or $20,000 less than the competition. That will buy you a lot of fuel, let me tell you. <laughs> so that really is a strong area of this Armada. And, mind you, versus the QX80, this is like very, very similar yeah. to it. And you're going to have significant savings over that as well. So all in all, what do we think about this refreshed Armada? Well, I have to say, after living with it this week, I really love this vehicle. Um, we hadn't been in the Armada too many different times before, and that's because this really didn't have everything that buyers were looking for. But Nissan listened to their customers, and what they did is they added the styling that a lot of people were asking for, they added the technology to go along with it, and they kept the same value that they had before. And really, that makes a killer combo. If you're looking for a big body on frame V8 um, SUV, this is a fantastic value and you would really be doing yourself a disservice if you only check out something like the Tahoe or the Yukon. Well guys, we really appreciate you watching this in-depth review of the refreshed 2021 Nissan Armada SL Midnight Edition. This has been a really awesome car to keep for the week, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below. It gives us more opportunities like this to review vehicles for long term, as well as go to press events. So be sure to do that, and also hit that notification bell. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.